sex. I said it, we're gonna talk about it guys. It's the show you've been waiting for. I have author, speaker, and incredibly beautiful Susan Bratton on the show, sex expert to everybody. Susan's list of accolades are amazing and she's going to share with us today how to keep that spark alive in our marriage, guys. If you tune in some of our earlier shows, you know, recently my wife and I released our 20 year anniversary video talking about lessons we've learned in 20 years of marriage. Susan is going to take that even farther and talk about the sometimes taboo subject of sex and how to keep that spark alive in your relationship. Susan, thank you for being on the show today, taking the time with us, and welcome to the Fallible Man podcast. Yeah, it's my pleasure, Brent. Thank you so much for having me. I, I am honored to be the first female on your show. And I'm also honored to just have an audience of men with whom I can talk frankly about sex because um, I have no problem at all talking about sex. I <laughs> love to talk about sex. And what I love to talk about is how to have great sex, how to give your woman what she really wants from you. And it's so nice to have an audience that's pretty much just all guys, so I can just do the straight talking that I like. One of the things that I love about helping men become better lovers is that guys are so great because, number one, you really care about the job of giving your woman satisfying sex. Number two, you just want the truth. You want the bare bones information. You want the checklist of what to do. And you it doesn't hurt your feelings when I'm just like, dude, here are the things you need to do. And you're like, <laughs> got it. I'm going to do that. Men are so easy. I love it because if I'm talking to a group of women, I have to kind of talk in stories and flowery stuff and we have to process a lot of emotions and, you know all that stuff and frankly i love to i love to help women have better sex but i like to help men even more <laughs> it's really my sweet spot because i love you guys so much men want to give women incredible sex you are driven to give them satisfaction. And what I like to do is what I call um, little hinges that swing big doors. Easy things a guy can do that are huge to their woman that make a really big difference, that make her want you. That's the thing that happens in relationship is you start out with all this new relationship energy, but over time, you stay as horny as you did on day one, but she doesn't. And that is a super common scenario. It's not the only scenario. There's the opposite experience in relationships as well, where his desire wanes, but hers stays strong, but it's not as common. And it's so common that guys feel like they have to do the heavy lifting in the sexual relationship that I have a program that I wrote called Revive Her Drive for men in relationship who aren't getting the quantity and quality of intimacy and physical lovemaking that they crave. And they want to know what they need to do to turn her back on and have her want him for sex again. So you're in my sweet spot here. So I'll go any direction you want to go. But I did have one thing on my mind that I wanted to talk about today. That's just, I woke up this morning thinking about you and I I have this, you know, this this little gem that I'd like to share. All right. Well, guys, with that introduction, you are crazy if you tune off the show. We're going to roll to our uh, intro and don't go anywhere. This is going to be awesome. Be better tomorrow because of what you do today. All right, guys. And we're back with Susan Bratton. And Susan has, I'm going to talk as little as possible in this episode and just let this woman <laughs> speak. You guys don't get to see the press packages that I do when I'm booking these shows for you. And Susan's press pass package is amazing. She has all kinds of books she's written, all kinds of appearances she's made, where she is just putting out amazing amounts of material for men and women who want to improve their sex life. And guys, let's face it, right? Any of us who have been married for any length of time are you know, you add children to that. Our sex life tends to, you know, take a back seat, especially once little ones are running around. I got two little girls. I got a six-year-old and a nine-year-old. 
that will still gladly end up in my bed first thing in the morning if they have their way to say about anything. I think a lot of you guys understand exactly what I'm talking about and how much of a toll that takes on your physical relationship. And let's face it, that's life happens, right? And it kind of sucks, but Susan's going to share with us today some incredible insights to help make your relationship better. Maybe you need to pick me up, a little tune up on your relationship. There's nothing to be embarrassed about. We all hit that point. So we're going to start with some easy questions and then uh, we're going to let Susan do what Susan does best and share with us some amazing insights. But first, Susan, I like to ask, what is your favorite kind of ice cream? Mint chocolate chip. Mint chocolate chip. My wife is a big fan of mint chocolate chip. <laughs> you have gone into, so I was looking up and doing some research for the show. You have, are, did I read it right? Are you a biologist or Wikipedia had an interesting in, uh, insert for you, but are you a biologist or it, it had some interesting ideas about... There's another Susan Bratton. Oh, okay. And she's a biologist. <laughs> so I think you ended up on her, her Wikipedia page. Okay. Uh, I, my title is Intimacy Expert to Millions. Okay. And for the past 15 years, I've been publishing passionate lovemaking techniques, bedroom communication skills, and sexual health and wellness protocols and ideas, natural methods to basically keep your, give you a bang and boner, which is one of my favorite phrases, you know, and, <laughs> and, or keep your vulva. Cause we don't say the, we sex experts, we don't say vagina anymore because that's like just one little part of the mm -hmm. woman's anatomy. So we say vulva or yoni, Y-O-N-I. Yoni is another word that a lot of women are using now that comes from tantric lovemaking circles. And um, so I do, you know, one of the things that I found in teaching people how to have what I like to call transforming having sex into making love um, is it's great to have orgasm skills. It's great to have pleasuring skills, sex skills, you know, oral mm -hmm. techniques and intercourse techniques and touch techniques and G spot awakening and female ejaculation and, you know, nipple gasms and all those wonderful things. It's great to have all of that. But if you can't, talk about what you want or ask for what you want, it's no good. So I also have bedroom communication skills like the sexual soulmate pact is a product that is a, it's a free technique that I give away at sexual soulmate pact.com that helps especially female bodied partners. Um, you, women don't want to tell their guy what to do. They want their guy to know what to do, which is difficult because every time you make love to a woman, the same woman, she's different because she's less steady state than the masculine. You know, you wake up, you have testosterone in the morning, you wake up horny, hopefully with an erection, which is a sign of good health. And you'd like your woman to wake up before those two little girls come into the bed and hop on top of you and make love to you and give herself a couple orgasms, give you one and go off on your day. You know, that's kind of like the perfect world for most guys. But <laughs> for enough. women, we, you know, we, we run on a 28 day cycle, even after menopause, women are very cyclical. And so what felt good to us yesterday is not necessarily what feels good to us today, which is why guys are like, well, it worked the last time we had sex. And now she's not, it's not doing anything. It's like so confusing to guys, you know? <laughs> so I, I give the, the orgasm techniques, but then I give, okay, how do you get her to feel comfortable enough telling you what she wants in every moment so you can get the feedback you need to be the lover you want to be to her. And she has this issue where she's like, well, I don't, I don't know what I want. I just know what I'm getting isn't it. And that is how I teach women to understand how to listen to their own bodies because our bodies know what we want. We just have to feel comfortable enough trusting that and then communicating what our bodies need to our partners. So I, I do a lot of communication techniques and then, you know, you can't really have good sex if somebody can't get a good erection or it hurts to have sex or, you know, you've got an episiotomy scar that won't heal or whatever, you know? Um, so those are really the three areas of expertise for me. And I've written 
45, I've published, uh, I haven't written them all myself, but probably 35 of the 45, I've written sex techniques and bedroom communication skills for people so that you can learn how to uh, have intercourse that gives her orgasms, how to go down on a woman and have her basically come the whole time your, you know, faces in her yoni, um, how to really be a good kisser, how to do incredible breast play. Once you start getting some of these really foundation skills, then she is more likely to say yes to sex, but she still won't say yes to sex and she still won't initiate, which is hard. Like you can be a really good lover. And, and after you finally talked her into bed and you've given her all these incredible orgasms, she'll be like, yeah, how come I never want to have sex? This is really good. And then it's like amnesia. She forgets. And <laughs> you have to start over again. See, women are just so like, complicated. Oh my God. I, I laugh all the time because, uh, you know, I, I grew up doing like relationship, going to relationship seminars and stuff like that. My father is a minister and I used to be. Um, so I grew up going to like marriage enrichment seminars back I mean, when I was a kid still. And I've gone to, growing up, gone, going to a lot of just, you know, multi-day marriage enrichment seminars. And I, one of the things that just blows my mind about relationships between men and women is women try and study men. And, and we are the simpler of the sexes as far as just, it's, it's fairly straightforward. I mean, we're not quite necessarily as two-dimensional as someone would like to think we are, but, you know, we are probably far simpler. There's a book that's uh, Men Are Waffles, Women Are Spaghetti. Or, <laughs> have you seen that? No, I have not. It, it's a great, <laughs> great book about the difference in the way men and women's brains and emotions work. Guys put everything in neat little compartments is, cubby holes uh -huh. right it's, it's like the ta old tape machines you see in the movies where they grab one tape at a time women are like a plate of spaghetti where you start on one end and it touches every other emotion and and man that can change from day to day it's one of the communication is one of the biggest lacking things in most relationships is we just don't understand how each other thinks and how differently and, and they complement each other well, but we we don't stop and appreciate. And it's like, uh, wait, but this worked before. This was good because men process that. We go, okay, this worked, and we put it in a box. And when we get back in that situation, it was like, yep, reach for that box because this works. And then we're like, wait, no, but why isn't it working? <laughs> <laughs> there's just this malfunction yesterday. meltdown in our brain. That's like, but I know this worked. I filed it away. I knew this worked. Um, so, yeah, I, I'm very interested in the relational aspect as far as the communication aspect. I was really yeah. thrilled going through your material, how much you have on just communicating uh, in, in the bedroom, so to yeah. say, because I we don't. People just, right, we all jump in the bedroom and once the clothes start coming off, the communication stops and we just go into autoplay it really doesn't work. And then you add the uh, outside influence of porn and the very unrealistic expectations that a lot of people grow up with, with porn in their life. And it's like, but, but I saw it on a show. It must work, right? That, that, that's how this is supposed to happen. Yeah. So you moved into not only books, but you also have supplements I saw. I do. I make supplements. I have another company called The 20 and I make a blood flow supplement because um, men suffer from loss of erectile rigidity and um, you need a lot of blood flow into a penis to lock it off, to keep it firm and hard. And as you age, you lose nitric oxide. And uh, women, we, our vaginas don't, they're not glandular. They don't have um, a lubrication system. Mm -hmm. The way our vaginas get lubricated is through blood flowing to our pelvis in arousal and then seeping through the vaginal mucosal walls and wetting the walls with the fluids from our blood. And if we don't have good blood flow, we can't get lubrication. And for both 
for both sexes, or I like to call it people across the gender spectrum, in all honesty. I mean, everything I do is for everyone. Mm -hmm. And I always say, I don't care if you're in a heterosexual monogamous relationship or you're some other flavor of anything, it's all good. Um, the, the issue that we have is that we have a lot of erectile tissue inside, you know, women have as much erectile tissue in our vulvas as men do in their penises. And a lot of women tend to rush sex and not get it. The hemodynamics of the penis allow it to fill very quickly with blood and get an erection. The way that the female vulva works, it has the same amount of tissue, but it doesn't have the same hemodynamics. So it's a slower kind of seeping of the, of the blood flow into the tissue to expand it. And when the vulva is engorged, plump, swollen, too messed with blood, then it has more surface area that sends more signals of pleasure to her brain to help her have orgasms more easily. And so if she doesn't get the warm up, the full body touch, the kissing, the breast play, the nipple play, the, the yoni massage, the oral pleasuring before penetration, then every time she has has sex, she's not getting the quality and the satisfying pleasure that is what is her orgasmic potential because she's trying to do so many things, including sex that's on her to-do list. Mm -hmm. And I think one of the best things that a male partner can do for his woman is to slow her down and kind of get her to allow you to get her fully turned on so that when you penetrate her, she, it, it really feels good to her and she can come without even touching the tip of her clitoris. You know, a lot of sex experts say it's the clit, touch the clit. You've got to touch the clit. Well, the clitoris is actually quite a large structure. It's um, I've got a little diagram here. I know you're, we're going to put this on YouTube. So I'll show you a picture because um, that'll send some of your listeners to your YouTube channel <laughs> to see what it looks like. This is what the vulva looks like on the outside. So you're familiar with the outer labia where the pubic hair is and the inner labia, the smaller lips. And then the vestibule is the opening at the top is the clitoral hood mm -hmm. and then the clitoral tip or glands. But that tip goes inside up the hood and out into little arms and legs that come down and completely embrace the opening to the vagina. And then if you go inside the vagina, there's a urethral sponge that runs along the roof of the vagina. That's what people call the G spot, but it's mm -hmm. not a spot. It's a big, long tube of tissue. It's the it's, uh, same as the one that's called the corpus spongiosum in your penis that runs the length of your penis and has your urethral canal in it. And then on the bottom of the inside of her vagina is the perineal sponge. And here's what it looks like if I take off the skin this is what it looks like inside. This is all erectile tissue. Most people are shocked when they see that this is the clitoris. Are you kidding me? I thought it was that little thing right there. Nope, that's just the tip of the iceberg. Here's the shaft. Here's the arms. Here's the legs. That's the G area going up inside the vagina. There's the perineal sponge right there. So all this tissue... Is, is, is much harder to get blood flow into. So kneading, rubbing, smoothing, tapping, licking, sucking really help bring blood flow into the tissue. And then when it's all plumped up and you insert your penis, it just feels so much better to her. Many women have never had sex with an erection, a clitoral erection. They've done it too fast. And so if there's any advice I can give guys, it would be number one, you have to use some words of encouragement. And I'd like to talk about the verbal side of sex because you, number one, you brought it up and number two, it's super important, Brent. Um, the, uh, and then the second thing is really getting her to slow down. You've got to 
take her nervous system over and get her to surrender and get her to relax and get her out of her head and into her body. And the way that you do that is you get your hands on her whole body. You stroke her hair, you kiss her cheeks, you kiss her neck, you stroke her collarbone, you rub her back, you squeeze her butt, you stroke her legs, you rub her feet. She can't get out of that monkey mind and relax and surrender to her pleasure with you if she's uptight and thinking about things. And it's, it's, it's like you have to, in a way, swamp her system with pleasure. So she just gives up on all that and connects with you in the present moment of the interplay of lovemaking. And that's has some heavy lifting, but it's also what men can do really well. It's like you've been given the gift of the ability to do this, and now it's getting her to allow you to do it. <laughs> do you hear it, guys? Women are like diesels. You got to slow it down, yeah. let it warm up, yep. take your time. Now, you said you want to talk about... The verbal. So, hey, yeah. let's, let's just go right into it. Okay. You know, I want the most for my audience and uh, you have a ton to share, it sounds like. Well, this is what I woke up thinking about this morning. For some reason, I, I really wanted to talk about how you speak to a woman to move her toward pleasure, to seduce her. Seduction has gotten a bad name, a bad rap, the word, because of the seduction and pickup artists and their orientation toward manipulating women into bed. But seduction actually just means moving someone toward pleasure. So your job, if you wish to take it, is to seduce your wife or girlfriend by making her a lot of verbal offers for pleasure. And the issue is that because you're testosterone dominant and she's estrogen dominant and testosterone is the hormone of horny, <laughs> it's the horny gnome, <laughs> you wake up horny every day and you're already turned on and it's super easy for you to get a heart on and you're ready to go and you've got this, you know, if you're lucky, you've got this uh, desire, you know, which is very sexy to us women. But we're three steps behind you. We're not warmed up and we don't wake up with a raging heart on and we're not horny all the time. We're horny. We have a five day horny window out of our 28 day cycle where we are likely to jump on top of you, but that's only five days a month where you're 30 days a month, you're horny. <laughs> and everything I always talk about is in generalities and people are on a bell curve and you might not be the person who wakes up horny and there's nothing wrong with you. Um, I, I just like to play to the middle, you know, play to right. the big curve, well, which is the typical, right? right? But there's no shame in anything. You are who you are. Um, what, a, what turns a woman on is oral appreciation. And with women, there's this little trick and it's a 50, 50 mix of, words of encouragement and adoration and appreciation with words of lust and desire. So you would want to just kind of think about the fact that she needs to be encouraged all the time. You're very confident because your testosterone forward. So you don't worry about your safety. You feel like you can figure anything out. If stuff breaks, you know how to fix it. You just feel more resourceful than your typical woman. And she is with you because you take care of things and protect her and keep her safe and love her and desire her. And she wants your desire. She wants to know that you love the curve of her ass. You love her full lips. You love the swell of her breasts and they're the perfect size for your hands. That's the kind of thing she wants to hear. But if you only said those things, she would feel like she was objectified. So 
for every time that you tell her that her ass looks so hot in those jeans that you want to strip them off her and throw her on the bed and consume her, you have to also thank her for the fantastic turkey meatloaf she made for dinner last night and how cute she was helping your daughter learn how to do cross stitch or whatever. So you want to be thinking about an, uh, an ongoing level of verbal appreciation. She needs, it calms her down and it makes her feel close and intimate to you. And it's difficult because it's a bit of a chore for you to do it. It gets easier with practice. The more you do it, the easier it gets. But men, you've heard, I'm a man of few words. Pretty much most guys are men of few words. It's hard for guys to think of those things and then speak them. So it's a practice for you that every time you come up with something you love about your wife or girlfriend and you tell her that, the more she is drawn into you, the more calm she feels. Because arousal, here's another tip for the guys, arousal begins in relaxation. So in your mind, when you want to turn her on, you want to twingle her, you know, to twist her dials and you want to push her buttons and you want to raise her. You want to get her turned on. You want to get her going. The problem is that if you start that, you're three steps ahead of her. You have to turn around and get her and bring her with you. And the way you bring her with you is you enfold her in your arms and you stroke her like a kitty and you relax her and you tell her things that you love about her and how sexy she is to you. And then she can relax and begin to take that in. And then once she relaxes, her spit starts to flow her eyes might water a little, her vagina begins to lubricate. She begins to remember why she loves you and why she wants you. And then you can start taking her up the arousal ladder by doing what I call my bullseye touch technique, which is imagining a bullseye. Your goal as a man is to shoot that arrow into the creamy center. But you must resist that because that's what she, that's how you want her to make love to you. You want her immediately to put her hands and then her mouth and then her yoni on your penis. But she that's too fast for her. So you need to stroke her hair and stroke her body and touch her breasts without going for the nipples. You don't want to grab her crotch. That's what you want. So I like to go by the platinum rule. I know, Brent, I know you know the golden rule, do unto others as you'd have them do unto you, right? As a minister's son, yeah, yeah. You, you know that rule. And that's often how we come into relationship. We think about, okay, I'm going to treat her the way I want to be treated. And so you're going right for the goods. But the problem is that you have to play by the platinum rule, which is treat your partner the way they want to be treated and have them treat you the way you want to be treated because you are so different as the masculine and feminine. So those are three little things. The, the first one is to... Tell her what you adore about her and what you find sexually irresistible in equal measure. That's a ratio. That's a golden ratio. The second is you've got to relax her before you can take her up or she'll never achieve her orgasmic potential. And the third thing is these erogenous zones, starting from the outside ring of the bullseye and working your way in to her genitals, her breasts, her lips. Those are the three erogenous areas. So those are some really good pieces of advice that, and every man who's listening is like, oh, I know all that. <laughs> and I can tell, because you think you know what you're doing, because testosterone makes you so certain. And I guarantee to you, you're not doing any of those things in the right way. So really take in what I just said again. And take a moment to overcome your natural proclivity toward certainty and, and overstating your own abilities and begin in a beginner's mind and listen to me because that's why Brent has me on. <laughs> I know what I'm doing. I've worked with thousands and thousands and thousands of men. <laughs> All right, guys, we're going to take half a second here. I, I want to pull back to what you just said. 
because most of us, right, we, we just had Mother's Day, right? And so, you know, most of us are pretty okay. And I say pretty okay, because I'm not going to say we're pretty good at remembering on Mother's Day to, you know, try and respect your spouse or the mother of your children or whatever. But let's face it, guys, we're pretty, pretty sad at this most of the time. Research has proven that the average mother to replace the average mother would take about 14 to 17 professionals <laughs> with the amount of work she does. Seriously. If she actually got paid on par with professionals who perform the same roles in a household on any given day, that's about 17 different professions that a mother is taking on. So, you know, I really want to grab on to this idea of having to help her relax. I know I try really hard and I still probably come pretty short on appreciating all my wife does every single day around the house for me, for our household, for our kids. And it's always on her mind. Okay. If you live in a home, you know how much there is always to do. And so without always weighing on their mind, the value right there of the idea of, okay, we got to go to a place where she can relax. You can take all that thought away before she can really enjoy your relationship. And if guys, you're fighting for your relationship, maybe you're healthy right now, maybe you're not really healthy in your relationship right now, understand you, because you think in boxes, right? We compartmentalized everything, can set all that aside and, and be horny. That's, that's like your go-to spot. Women need to be able to put all that aside and they can't do that on their own. You have to relax things away. You have to let that flow away. Think of the old Calgon commercials, right? You remember those old Calgon commercials? Calgon, Calgon take, take me, me away. away. Right? <laughs> You've got to give that to your spouse. Yeah. Because she cannot relax and enjoy being with you unless you do. Now, guys, if you're not getting something out of this, you're broken. I just, I'm sorry. I'm, I'm not even going to be nice about that. Okay. Susan is sharing with us incredible insights. So hit that thumbs up button. If you're on YouTube, we're going to roll to our sponsor and we will be right back with more from Susan Bratton. Guys, don't you dare miss this show. Today's episode brought to you by thefallibleman.com. That's right. It's us. Head over to www.thefallibleman.com and check out our blog, updated twice a week with new content and links to all of our social media offerings. Tag or search us at The Fallible Man or at Fallible Man on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and other social medias for daily content. While you're there, check out our attitude swag, shirts, cups, stickers, and more. Again, that's www.thefallibleman.com. All right, guys, we're back, and uh, thanks for sticking around. We are having an amazing conversation with Susan Bratton. She is sharing all kinds of incredible information. And if you don't take this home with you and improve your relationship tonight, then you miss the entire point of this episode, guys. She is just laying out diamonds for us, and she has so much more. I'm going to have links to her website and to all her materials in the show notes for you guys, and you need to go and spend some time checking out. She has an amazing library of information to help you wherever you are in this part of your life, guys. Marriages work, relationships work at a physical level, but they also work at an emotional level and a mental level, and she has information on all of this, and she's dedicating her life to helping us be better at the thing we think we're great at. But uh, we all got some room to work. And if you don't want to be the best lover in the world, well, I guess there's exceptions to every rule, but you know, that's your thing. We're moving into this next segment and Susan is going to teach us how to seduce our wives. Something yeah. we all probably stopped doing on about year two of our marriage. Yeah. Yeah. Well, and especially when you have children, it gets really, really difficult to um, keep the flame alive because you're pulled in so many ways. And, you know, you, you don't want to make noise in the house. The kids might hear you, what have you. But I can tell you that having a really good sex life is very important modeling for your children's future relationships. So by not being 
demonstrative, affectionate, and saying to the kids when they're certain, when they're old enough, you know, mommy and dad, daddy's going to give mommy a massage. We're locking the door. Don't bother us unless the house is burning down. You're on your own for an hour. Uh, just, just give us some time to be together. That's good modeling, not bad parenting. Um, so the, the issue is that what you want to do is you want to keep your sex life hot through your whole marriage. You don't want to say, well, while the kids are little, we're just going to have to have sex take a back seat. Because the problem is once they grow up, you will have become so intimately disconnected that, you know, she's going to say, you know, I think I just wanted to get a divorce now that the kids are off to college. And you're going to be like, what? I thought this was our time for us to be back together in our life. And you're like a deer in the headlights. It happens time and time and time and time and time again, where the guy is completely blindsided. So you've got to hold the torch for your sex life. And one of the things that happens is that guys feel like they, they go into a victimhood mentality because it's really hard when your wife rejects you for sex. And it's really hard not to take it personally. And when she's rejecting you for sex, it's because you're, you're making offers that are too big because you're three steps ahead of her. And so you, what you have to do is turn around and come back and get her. And the way that you do that is you don't make her offers for sex. You make her offers smaller offers. I have an ebook called More Sex More Often. It's at moresexmoreoften.com. <laughs> and uh, <It's> easy <laughs> to find. <laughs> and um it's going to give you more examples of what I'm about to explain to you. But what you want to be doing is you want to be holding the torch for a hot sex life in your marriage while you're raising your kids, because you're, you're the, the heavy lifter. You're the one with testosterone. You're the one that's always horny. And we need you to be our sexual champion as the woman. And what we need you to do is not say, do you want to have sex? ever, 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 what we want you to do is say, can I get you a glass of wine and give you a foot rub? Would you like a shoulder rub? Do you want me to hold you on the couch while you watch your favorite show? And then you sneak your hand up her blouse and play with her breasts and kiss her on the neck and she gets all turned on. What you want to do is you want to ease her into it. You've got to remember that she's not horny and turned on with a raging boner like you are. You've got to, it takes her 20 minutes of your heavy lifting to get her clit erection on. So that's not her fault. None of this is her fault. And so that's why I don't want you to take it personally. And it's not work to seduce your wife or your girlfriend. It's fun. It's sexy. It's joyful. It's intimate. It's affectionate. And the other thing is that if you only touch her when you're trying to get sex, then she's going to stop letting you touch her. She's going to avoid you. She's going to end up in the other room in bed with the kids because you're always grabbing her to get sex. So what you have to do is you have to hold her a lot. You have to kiss her eyelids. One guy said to me, my wife walks up to me now and closes her eyes and holds her face up to me because she wants me to kiss her eyelids. Like you told me to kiss her eyelids. And I'm like, kiss her eyelids. <laughs> she was avoiding him. And I, I have a book called The Passion Patch, the one place to touch her, to arouse her in 30 seconds flat. And it's essentially how you figure out what places your woman likes to get touched because every woman is different. Small of the back, an ass cup, a leg squeeze, a wrist squeeze. You'd be surprised what locations your woman gets turned on from touching. Where for you, it's all just like, touch my dick, 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 touch my dick. You know what I mean? It's like, so you, it's the center of the bullseye is your happy place. But for her, it's the, all the stuff around it leading to the bullseye, right? <laughs> so when you make her small offers, when you turn around and you come back to where she is and you say, can I hold you? Do you want to go in the hot tub? Can I draw you a bath? Let me brush your hair for you. Whatever her things are, foot rubs are always good. That's her foreplay. It doesn't mean anything to you other than you get to get your hands on her which is nice. And you want to get your hands on her as much as you can, because the more you touch her body, the more it's like, uh, we had a little Sheltie one time, a little Shetland sheepdog, beautiful animal. 
He did not like to be touched. He didn't like to be petted. And so, and we wanted to touch him because he was just glorious, this beautiful little foxy dog with mm-hmm. this gorgeous fur, beautiful face, like just one of the most beautiful creatures God made. And he would just avoid and avoid and avoid and avoid. And that's like many wives. <laughs> and so we had a little treat and we'd feed him the treat and pat his head. And, f- and then the next day, feed him a little treat and pet his head, feed him a little treat a little longer, a little longer strokes. And pretty soon, about a year into his puppydom, he would just come up and let you pet him. And that's essentially what you're doing with your touches with your wife. You're gaining her trust that it's not always just for sex. So making her those offers that are much smaller so she can relax and connect with you is a very, very good seduction strategy. And then as she gets more turned on, you offer her bigger offers. Would you like to lie down and I'll take all your clothes off and oil up your body and make you, you know, it's it's dry here in the winter. Would you like me to just butter your body up with some mango butter in bed? Whatever, you know, whatever she'd like. Uh, and I've got a million of these ideas, by the way. So at More Sex More Often, I just give you idea after idea after idea, because I always feel like I can give you the structure Mm-hmm. But I should also give you all of the things you can cherry pick and try out. So it's nice to have the structure, right? I'm supposed to, you know, I'm supposed to slowly accelerate her. Okay, well, what do I do? I don't leave you hanging. And I think that's very important. And then I'll, I'll end with this last piece, Brent. And that is that <sighs> you have to keep your sex life exciting. And the way desire works is an equation, It's variety or novelty, the newness, plus security, comfort, et cetera, safety equals desire. So we end up with the safety and the security, but that's ho-hum. Women have ravenous sexual appetites. Your job is to unleash her sexual siren. Your job is to make it totally safe for her to be ruthlessly sexually self-expressed. And when you can create that safety by adding in the novelty and the variety, you will continue to increase and increase and increase her desire through the rest of her life through menopause and beyond. Menopause is not the end of sex. Just because your estrogen drops means literally nothing other than that your vagina might get a little bit tender. And so you, there's many remedies for that, which I talked about in my, you know, like the sexual part of things. We're not going to go into that here, Mm -hmm. but she actually gets a more testosterone in ratio going through menopause for a lot of women post-menopausal sex is the best sex we've ever had. I am 60 years old this year and I am having the hottest sex of my life. So I'm coming better than ever. I'm having incredible sex with my husband. We're having so much fun together. So you don't have to think about this as a short term. What you're doing is you're thinking about a big arc of joy and pleasure over time where you just keep bringing it, bringing it, bringing it, bringing it, bringing it. And she's the girl who's happy with her husband. Show me a bitchy woman. I will show you a woman who needs to get really well calmed. That is the truth. I mean, there might be money issues, which that's security. She's not secure. If you've got money issues covered and you're doing okay, then the next thing is she needs good orgasms. It's pretty simple. So novelty is let me buy you some lingerie. Let's try a new sex position. Let's learn a new technique. I want to do G-spot pleasuring. Let's buy a sex toy and use sex toys in our lovemaking. Let's have sex in a different place around the house. Let's go have sex out in the SUV when the kids are asleep. Whatever. Just mixing it up is the trick where you're always full of ideas and you make her three or four offers. It's about multiple choice. It's about coming back where she is, recognizing her state, and then getting her into relaxation so you can take her up with arousal and you can start building the offers. You're always giving her offers. And remember, you're beautiful and you're hot. I love you and adore you and you totally turn me on. These are the things that will make all the difference in your sex life. 
Okay, wow. And there's, there's just so much to even begin to unpack there. And guys, Susan has material on all those things. Like she just man mentioned, like I've been going through researching and she has books on sex toys and positional changes and introducing new things in the bedroom. And there is help for all that. And you know what? There's nothing wrong with going and looking that stuff up, okay? Be the hero in your marriage or in your relationship yeah. and take take the initiative. Women like to research things, right? That's why Cosmo sells so many magazines. It's a horrible magazine. It still sells so many issues. So many issues, thank you. Because women are interested in researching these things. They're interested in doing these things. One of the things we found out with that uh, series 50 Shades of Grey is more women are actually interested in a little adventure, maybe not to that extent, but more women are interested in adventure in their sex life than you may have ever thought before because those movies did really well and the book series did even better and predominantly women bought them. So yeah. women are interested guys, but take the initiative, be the hero, go check out Susan's material and see what she's got to offer you guys because Hey, you, you want a better sex life? You want to put the spark back in your marriage? Be the hero, do the research, get out there and do it. So there you go. That's me, uh, Susan Bratton, trusted intimacy expert to millions. And I'm so happy to be here today with you, Brent. Thank you so much for having me on the Infallible Man podcast. I loved being here with you. Guys, from us at the Fallible Man podcast, thanks for joining us today. Thank you, Susan, for being here. Be better tomorrow because of what you do today. We'll see you next time. This has been the Fallible Man Podcast. Your home for everything man, husband, and father. Be sure to subscribe so you don't miss a show. Head over to www.thefallibleman.com for more content and get your own Fallible Man gear.